Hello, this is Keisha Marrero here with an instructional video on how to turn this into this. It's actually a really simple procedure. As you can see, I have not started on the bottom doors yet. Um, the overall result is going to look like the top doors. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here just so that you can see some of the detail that's on that actual door. And it's a really simple change. Um, Changing the handles can go a long way from those old dingy ones that I have there. And believe it or not, that is actually wallpaper that's put on those doors. So I'm going to go step by step and do forgive me for cutting in on certain parts just for time purposes to try to keep this nice and compact. And for the purpose that I'm actually holding the camera myself um, through this entire video. Now... The first thing that I did was to actually remove the doors. You want to get those really nice and clean before you apply anything to them, just to make sure that you have proper adhesion and not run into any problems in the future. I scrubbed them down with some of them with some soap and water just because they had oil built up on them. This was a foreclosed home that I purchased. And with others, I was able to get away just by taking some Lysol wipes and cleaning it down. Now, I waited until it was nice and dry. And then I applied this little guy right here, which is a spray-on bonding primer, which they sell at Sherwin-Williams. And it is used to allow um, paint and other miscellaneous objects to be able to attach to a surface properly. It grants them better adhesion. And then I am using this paint right here, which is a Pro Classic waterborne or water-based alkyd. Um, I decided to go with the satin finish just because I'm not a fan of the semi-gloss, even though it does give you a higher washability. Now, um, it was just really simple. I just chose a color that I liked which in this case, it was my Urban Putty, to actually paint the back of the cabinet itself, which is the frame. Now for the brush, I'm using a pretty brush. This is an XL Dale, as you can see, and has uh, been used quite a lot. I prefer the tapered edges just because it's easier to do a nice straight edge than it is if you're trying to fight with a straight edge brush. Um, just when you kind of uh, push it down, it allows you to get a nicer straighter line than you would otherwise. Uh, try to keep your brushes in good condition because that can go a long way. And let's go to the next part of the video. One moment. Now, as you can see, these are the originals. They haven't been painted yet. I haven't really done anything to them. Still original handles and everything. Um, now, these metal shelves right here, that you can remove them. Um, it's certainly something that you're going to want to do when refinishing these. You want to have a nice, clean, blank slate before you start painting anything. And I did decide to do a little fun detail just to kind of personalize these cabinets to me. And basically, I had these removed. I'm not sure if you can see them all that well with the video, but there's an actual texture in there with pretty much like a stone look to them. And all that is is this Rustoleum American Accents. This is the fast drying, even though it says fast drying, it actually takes over six hours before you can actually mount it up back onto the frame. So that is actually one of the mistakes that I first made when I was using this, is that I'm thinking here, hey, it says fast drying and within half an hour, I try to grab it to actually put it on and the little flake part started to come right off the surface. Now, after I waited six hours, you can pretty much scrub these and it's not coming off. I'm trying to see if I can get this to focus. But they're not coming off. They're set on pretty well in there and they're not really scratching off, which is what I wanted to do for this particular look. 
Another quick thing that I wanted to note here just before I went ahead and started taking off the doors off the other side and started to clean those off and applying the primer, make sure that all your doors have some sort of stopper like this. It can be rubber, it can be made of soft cloth. And the reason you want that to be there is to protect the paint that you have on the frame. Because even though it's a water-based modified oil, when you put it together and you close the door and you don't have these stoppers, there's still the possibility that this paint is going to want to stick to the frame. And when that happens and you pull it, either the paint on the door or the paint on the frame is going to rip off. So this is just an extra protection just to prevent that from happening. Now I do apologize ahead of time because I'm not going to be using the same pieces to show you everything step by step and the reason being is because I'm trying to save a little bit of time because it does take quite a bit um, between the coats of paint to actually dry off for me to be able to do the next section. Uh, these are actually dividers that go inside one of the cabinets that I have in the bathroom, which I'm also going to be finishing up with um, some wallpaper. As you can see, I have already painted the other side. I have not put a protective clear coat on this yet. Uh, that is entirely optional, especially if you're using an oil-based paint. However, I decided to do that just to give it an extra protection just because it is going in a bathroom and it is going um, also in a kitchen. Now I have here my bonding primer. I'm just shaking this up really well. All that I have underneath is actually just a plastic bag just to protect the floor when I'm spraying. And you just want to get a nice universal coat on that. You don't want to put it on too heavy because then you end up getting overspray um, or drops of too much of that primer on it and when that happens when you go to paint on top of it then you're going to get lumps and it's not going to be a smooth finish so we're going to let those dry for about um, I would say anywhere between 25 minutes to an hour just make sure that you paint it um, earlier than six hours after it has been applied Okay, so here I have several um, pieces that are all set and ready to get top coated with a clear. For the clear, I'm using a uh, Wood Classics Waterborne Polyurethane Varnish, also in satin. And the really great thing about this is that when you paint it on, you will see in the areas that you've actually applied it because it'll turn that particular section a milky white so that you know if there is any particular area that you haven't covered with the product yet. So just give it a really quick shake, just because sometimes it does have some sediment at the bottom that you want to get really well mixed in with the rest of the product. Now I did want to go ahead and reinstate the fact that I have already done two coats of the Pro Classic on these doors. The clear is actually going to be the final step to finish the inside of the doors. So all I did for this is pretty self-explanatory. You just paint it on the doors. You don't even have to paint the sides. Um, let me see if I can get this up. As you can see, the sides are still white, except for a tiny bit of uh, overlap there, which is good just so that when you put in the wallpaper you don't see any of those white spots if you do end up cutting the paper for whatever reason a little bit too short. Um, so for this I applied the first coat of the Pro Classic. I let it dry typically at about three hours after applying the first coat you should be all set to apply the second coat. Once you dry that off really well then we would be all set to go ahead and put the clear on top. Now, one thing that I did notice while doing these is that you do want to keep everything in the same direction. Even if initially uh, you have to go at different ways about it just to get into every nook and cranny. And the reason being is because once it dries, you will see sometimes some of those brush strokes if you did do them in 
different directions for each section. So as you can see already, in the areas where I've already applied that polyurethane, you're seeing where it's turning whiter. And don't worry, that's not going to change the color. Once it actually dries, it'll dry out to what it was before you put the clear on top, which is really great for the satin finish just because you're not going to end up with a different color than what you originally intended to. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up this door and do the others and then I'll continue with the tutorial. Okay, so I just have finished applying the first coat of the polyurethane to the doors. How many coats you do is up to you if you're doing it in an area of a counter or an area that you're going to be in, in constant uh, contact with, then I would probably do about three coats. I'm going to let this dry for probably 30 minutes to an hour before I do another coat. Uh, it's been about five minutes. And as you can see, it's already starting to dry pretty nicely and going back to the original darker color. For these, I'm only going to do two coats. And then I will go and instruct on how to do the wallpaper portion of the instructional video. So while my polyurethane coat is drying in the other room, I'm going to go ahead and just spray these um, light socket fixtures and the little dividers that were inside the shelves with the Rust-Oleum American Accent stone texture. How heavy you apply this is up to preference. Personally, I like it pretty heavy. So I'm gonna go all out and spray this until I am happy. And that's basically what you're going to do with this. Don't be afraid to get nice and close in that. Um, be sure not to touch these until they are nice and dry because they will wipe off rather easily um, unless they're completely dry. Now it's really important that you also don't start touching or working with the doors or the frame until the polyurethane has had a chance to cure for at least um, six hours. I cannot reinstate that enough because if you do, what's going to happen is that that polyurethane is going to become sticky and it's not going to cure properly. So while this is drying and my polyurethane is drying, I'll go ahead and start doing the cutouts for my wallpaper. Okay, so we're back here. Um, it's been about six hours since the polyurethane on the doors have been drying with that second coat. Uh, now, I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is the same wallpaper that I had originally shown in the beginning of the video. It is simply a different color. The other one was blue and for this one, I am doing a beige color. So I am alternating colors between the doors for the kitchen cabinets. Now here are a couple of things that I did want to point out as far as things that you're going to need. Now you are going to need um, some sort of spatula to be able to smooth the wallpaper out once you actually put it on the back of the door. You're going to need a pen. Um, I would suggest using a ballpoint pen rather than one of those fine points just to avoid accidentally tearing the paper when you're doing your markings on the back of it. Granted, there's different ways to measure your paper out. I'm going to show you what I found worked best for me um, in order to be able to get a nice smooth edge with the most minimal amount of waste as far as wallpaper. This is, I'm sure all you know, wallpaper can be pretty expensive depending on the type of wallpaper that you're using. We're going to need a foam brush. 
If you have a bigger foam brush than what I have at the moment, by all means do use it. It is going to make your job a whole lot easier. Unfortunately, this is the only thing that I had at hand. We're going to need a pair of scissors to be able to cut out our wallpaper once it's been measured out. We're going to need an X-Acto knife to be able to trim out the access once the paper has gone on the back of the door. Really important, you need to make sure that your knife is actually sharp and not dull. And the reason I say this is because if you do have a dull knife when you go to cut the wallpaper, rather than giving you a nice smooth edge, it's going to leave a jagged edge. It's going to try to chew that paper and it's not going to look very pretty at the end of the day. I also have a rag which I intend to put around the edge of the spatula or the putty knife, whatever you'd like to call this, in order to prevent myself from damaging the surface of the paper when I'm trying to smooth it off and make sure it has no bubbles. Um, on that door and lastly probably the most important thing besides the actual wallpaper is going to be your wallpaper paste I bought this at Sherwin-Williams it's the Roman Pro 880 it's a clear strippable wallpaper adhesive granted that these wallpapers that come from York and Brewster do tend to have a pre-pasted back I find that it's not enough for it to be able to stick properly to the back of a door. This is like a formica material, so it does tend to be very smooth. It's not porous at all. So you might have some adhesion issues. And this is just to ensure that it's really on there and not going to peel up as you keep touching it and opening and closing those doors. In reality, if you were just going to put this on a wall, on plaster, uh, stucco, or drywall, you wouldn't have to use the paste since it's not an area that's going to be constantly touched. But this is just a safety precaution for myself. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I measure this out. I do use something to hold a paper in place when I'm trying to do my measurement just so that it doesn't roll back up on me. And we'll go from there. Okay, so I have my door placed on top of the wallpaper now. Uh, the easiest way that I found to do this was to take the paper, lift it up, and give myself enough measurement to just touch the very bottom of that door, or very top, whichever way you want to look at this. And then I'll take my pen and mark all around it around the door and then I will show you what I do from that point forward. I am going to give me myself a little bit uh, more wiggle room here just because as you can see I have these jagged edges that come uh, from the original cutting on the wallpaper when you take it out of the roll. So I'm just going to make it a little bit longer so that uh, when I use my scissors or my exacto knife to trim that out I'm not going to see uh, that jagged pattern on the corner. Okay, so I have done my first set of lines. I don't know if you can tell, they're right there. Um, with my ballpoint pen, uh, one of the things that I forgot to mention is to keep the painted side of the door facing up, just so that when you're using your pen to do your markings, you if you, for whatever reason, do get some of that ink on the door, it goes on the side that's going to be covered wall by the wallpaper rather than getting it on the side that's already nice and painted. If for whatever reason you do get some paint on the painted side, I'm sorry, not paint, some ink on the painted side, uh, you should be able to wipe it off fairly easily with a Lysol wipe just because you do have that polyurethane clear coating over the top to protect that. Now from this point forward, what I do to get my next measurement on the side, just to give that same excess that I have here on the other side, and forgive me for doing this, but it's kind of hard to do it and record at the same time, but 
basically I will lift it up like this and then do my next marking. Hopefully I can go ahead and multitask here. Just a very light line. You don't have to do anything too dark. And then around the corner as well. And then I'm gonna flip it back down and do the top portion, the exact same thing, stand it up how I did here, just to get that second measurement for the side. Okay, so here we go. Here are my markings already all done. Um, I'm using a piece of spare tile to hold my uh, end of my wallpaper down to keep it from rolling back up. Now, all we're going to do from this point forward, and as you notice, I did um, do both sides. And this little edge right here is going to be really important, and I will show you why in a minute. Um, since I'm not doing an edge on the top, since I'm using where the paper's already cut for this edge, I don't have to draw it out, so I'm basically gonna cut here. So my first cut for this paper, I'm gonna cut around the outer edge all the way up to the top and then cut this outer edge as well. This section here is just going to be waste. Um, it's not that much paper left over to be able to do anything with it. So let me go ahead and cut that really quickly and I'll be right back again. Okay, so I'm going to try to show this as best as I can um, just because it's a little bit difficult to hold the phone and uh, try to do my cuts. I cut via that outer line to get rid of the actual roll just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And I also cut along the top to get rid of my excess, which is right here. Now the next cuts that we're going to do is so that we don't have any overlap on the actual wallpaper when we put it on the door. So we're going to do one cut alongside here and cut along this line as well. So you're going to essentially be taking out a little square off this section so that when you put it down, on the door you don't have any access remaining on those corners okay so now here comes the fun part as you can see i have a little square missing from each corner so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my door this is the side that is not painted which is the original. And I'm going to grab some paste. Uh, some parts are a little watery, so I'm just gonna try to stir it up a little bit. And we're just going to basically paint this on you don't want to put it on too thick. Uh, just a thin layer that's enough to cover the surface. And the reason you don't want to do it too thick is when you start using your putty knife to squeeze the excess off, you're basically going to have a mess on your hands if you put too much on. And that was a lesson learned the hard way, trust me. So just basically paint this on as best as you can. Okay, so I have lowered the door onto the piece of wallpaper. There really is no easy way of doing this. Um, usually I will just hold a corner and um, slowly start um, putting it over the door and then flipping it upside down with the painted portion facing towards me and then using the pen guidelines that I had originally drawn out in order to set it into position. Uh, the key to this part is to make sure that you don't start pressing too hard or that'll 
um, allow that glue to set in a little bit too quickly for you and it's not going to give you a whole lot of wiggle room. Okay, so I have my little putty knife wrapped up on some cloth and this is the fun part where you get to uh, start taking all those air bubbles out. You do want to take some time doing this. This is probably the most important step to doing this because the last thing you want is to have spent all this time painting and priming and prepping the store just to find out that when you hang it, you have a giant bubble sticking in the middle of the door. Not to mention that that trapped air is going to compromise how it is adhering to the surface. So just take your time, make sure that you know you pass your hand on top of it, and get out any bubbles that you can see. Uh, try to apply enough force to get the bubble out, but not enough to actually damage the wallpaper. This is a textured wallpaper. I will advise you guys to know that the more textured the wallpaper you're working with, the harder it is to be able to get the bubbles out without damaging the surface. And the same is true for the thicker wallpaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish here. Once all the bubbles are out, we're going to apply very, very little paste to the corners here, and then just press that paper down and do the same exact motion that we're doing at the top of the door on the side. Take a clean rag and clean off any excess paste that you might have on that side of that door. Okay, so the door is finally wallpapered. Now, if you will notice, I'll be very gentle with this just because the paste is still wet. We have some excess on the edges, which was that jagged line I had originally mentioned, which was the very beginning of the wallpaper rule. We are going to let this sit overnight just so that the glue is nice and dry before we do anything else with this. I'm not going to cut the excess off of it until it's dry. And the reason being is because I want to make sure that that uh, paper does not shift while it's trying to dry. So it's safer just to wait for it to get completely cured before we go off trimming the excess. Okay, so here we have it. The door is completely dry already. It's the next day. As you can see, it's a lot lighter in here. Now, as far as the excess that I was referring to, you see that line right there? Let me see if I'm going to be able to do this so I can show you guys. Basically, all we're going to do is take our X-Acto knife. And start in a corner. And just press down against that edge. get that excess off. Try not to lift the blade because sometimes that won't give you an even cut. And be careful about how far in you go because you don't want to tear off the paint off the door on the section on the corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that on all sides. Okay, so now it is time to finish the look of the door. As you can see, all the edges have been completely trimmed off. Now, because this was already a door that was hung up, I didn't have to replace the actual hardware. Um, so this is just gonna go back onto the frame as it originally was. And I already have, conveniently enough, the, the little holes in the back drilled, so I am able to put the screws on the back of the door. Now, for this part, 
I like to put the screws in through the front rather than the back first like you're supposed to. And the reason being is because um, when you puncture the hole, you want to make sure that you're not damaging the wallpaper in the front. So let me just go ahead and open this bag and quickly show you how I like to do that. So here I can see that that's the indentation for that first hole. So I'll just apply some amount of pressure, push it in, and then just slowly pull it back out. Just so that you're not damaging the wallpaper because if you do it from underneath first What's going to happen is that you're going to start pushing the wallpaper out and you're going to get a giant bubble right here Just because the this wallpaper is particularly thicker than the old one that I was working with and I did find that to be um, the problem as far as the wallpaper not breaking like I was expecting it to and just lifting it and leaving me with a bubble. So here's the second hole right here. And then just slowly lift it back up. And then all I'm gonna do is just put these over the top and fasten them with the screws on the back. And there you have it, one completed door with the door knob already installed, ready to be hung up. I just wanted to thank you all for watching. I hope that you have found this video helpful. And feel free to post your thoughts, concerns, or your own style of doors that you decided to do with wallpaper. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.